What message do you have for teachers out there who want to make causes come alive for students? Well, you know, educating the students is such an important thing, and our teachers are some of our rocks, in a sense, in that they're really here for us, and they've done so much to make sure we're okay after everything that happened. But one of the things that I think it's really important for teachers to focus on is, while it's important to educate the students about the topics, also encourage the students to look, f f look for more into those on their own. Encourage the students to read past the lines, look into things outside of school, find something they're really interested in, because at the end of the day, you don't learn everything that's important about life in school. And if I were a teacher, I would tell my students to just look out into the world, look out into discovering things that you won't necessarily learn in a classroom, and create a conversation with them. Maybe every day ask students something they learned on their own, and you know, have them educate the other students. One of the best ways for students to learn something is from other students, and I think if teachers focus more on that, we'd have some really positive change in classrooms. Well, and both of you are incredible activists, incredible change makers. Can you tell me, how did the teachers influence your journey to be here today? Oh, teachers have had an insane influence. I mean, my own mother is a teacher in the public school system, so I mean, it's really close to my heart. Um, but obviously, like he said, our teachers are our rocks. So many of them have been so supportive of this whole thing. They remind us constantly every day that they're behind us no matter what, all our lives. And, you know, a lot of my courses have really helped me through all of this because I take a lot of AP classes where we synthesize a lot of things and we think deeper into the problems and we have discussions rather than them just teaching us. Um, so it's really important to get, engage in conversation and that's what kind of helped me engage in conversation in the real world because we did it so much in the classroom. Hmm. Uh, can I drill down on that for a second? Any mm -hmm. AP courses in particular, some of the skill sets that you learned that you pulled into? The, I know some of your colleagues and some of your fellow students were taking some of the AP courses, and that's what they have said helped to influence how they looked at this question of safe schools and look at the issue of gun violence and the, the lens they put around that. Is that something that you would believe in? Is that something that uh, you, you would be comfortable to speak on? Jackie, do you have a single class that isn't an AP? Yeah, one. <laughs> <laughs> That answered the question beautifully. Yes. And for every class she has that isn't an AP, I have one that is an AP. I only take one. But okay. from Jackie will be able to elaborate and speak with real intelligence here. But from what I've learned in AP classes, it's always important to you know, read what you're told to read, apply it, and then think twice. Yes, definitely. I mean, in particular, my AP seminar classes really helped me with public speaking because I was never really used to that, so it forced me to present um, social issues. I mean, I talked about drones, but I mean, <laughs> it, still, it still prepared me for real world stuff. And AP language and composition, I mean, I did an entire project on gun control in December, so it really prepared me by knowing my facts before anything even happened. Beautiful. And I, I know I posed the question in the broader sense, but can I ask in a very pointed way, what message do you have for teachers across America for what you want to come alive in classrooms? Like I said before, the, one of the most important things is to teach students to teach. Have students innovate each other. Have students innovate their parents, neighbors, friends. Because f here's an example. I can't vote in the next election. I, I'm speaking out. I'm doing all these things. And... At the end of the day, I can't cast a vote myself. But for every student here that can't cast a vote, there are dozens and dozens of people that they can have voting for them because people listen when somebody, no matter how old they are, really has something to say and when they really know what they're talking about. So I believe that teachers should continue encouraging students to look beyond the classroom and really teach in their community. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've experienced some teachers that are very close-minded that think it's their job to teach the students, but it's kind of a collaborative relationship. It should be because, I mean, I for one have some things to teach teachers. They, they, they automatically assume that they're always spot on, but they're, they, they need to open their perspectives, and a lot of teachers already do, and it's just important that they allow the students to teach them as well. So, again, like J Jackie and I both said, the best thing for teachers is to just keep an open mind. One of my favorite teachers, Scott Beagle, who was lost in the shooting at my school, he, his mother was telling me that when he went to South Africa, he did a program volunteering to teach there. The first thing he said when he came back was, I learned so much more f from those kids than I ever had in my entire life. Mm -hmm. Teachers need to teach and also be willing to learn because it's two-sided. It's, it's a two-player game. Mm -hmm. For people who find a cause and they want to make a difference, what advice would you give them? 
I mean, the most important thing is to collaborate with other students because no one can do this alone. Um, we didn't do it alone. We have a team of dozens of people by our sides, and it's so important to collaborate with other students because we're in this together. We all went through our tragedy together, and obviously on a local scale, they're dealing with whatever problem that affects them together. So That's a great tip. Do you have a few other tips you can share? Well, m you know, alongside that, I would say that it's very important to work with people who aren't going to want to work with you. Create a conversation, listen. Uh, we've worked with a lot of adults and elected officials who will tell us that we don't know what we're talking about and to stay in our lane, that we need to sit down and shut up. But at the end of the day, mm. we experience what we experience. We have something to say, and our voices are just as important. Be willing to not let your politicians off the hook. They're going to say things to you that are going to, they're going to try to hold you over. They're going to throw you a bone. You can't let them do that. It's their job to work for you. Make sure they're doing it. Beautifully said. Any other key tips you want to share? Because this is incredibly helpful for youth and for all who are watching. Yeah, I mean, going off of the keeping the politicians on their toes, you have the power to have as much of an educational advantage as them because everything we need to know is at our fingertips on our, on our social media and on the Internet. We can know the, every single fact in the world is available to us, and we need to utilize that. Well, yes, um, and on your way to the polls, when you are going to vote and when you're discussing people who are running for positions, you can look up how they th view things. You don't just have to look at their party letter. You can see what they've done for these issues. You can see what they've done in the past. You can see what they've said. We have access to every single thing we need about the people we're putting into office. And moving off of that, I'd say our last and most important tip is don't be afraid to use your voice. Mm -hmm. No matter how young you are. Because we made a huge difference and they can too. I love that, by the way. I absolutely love that. Sometimes when people face challenges, challenges that can seem insurmountable, whether that be gun safety, whether that be the environment, whether that be any poverty in our world, they feel that the problems are just too overwhelming and the adversity is too great. Can you share with us an example when you maybe had that sentiment where you felt the adversity was too great and what gave you the courage to push through it? You know, days before the march, I was with my friends and we were staring this big, scary and important thing in the face and we thought, what are we doing? We're a bunch of students who are trying to make a positive change in the world, but we are about to be dealing with something that is so much bigger than us. But we realized pretty quickly that we aren't creating, the, not me, pardon me, we aren't this change. We are part of this big, beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. We saw the other students organizing walkouts. We saw students seeking out the leadership positions into which we were thrust. And we saw we, there's so much support everywhere. So even when you feel like it's too much and you're chasing a white whale and it's impossible, realize that there are people all over the country that you can get in touch with that want to help you, that want to talk to you, that want to offer your support, their support. Mm -hmm. I mean, all we are is vessels for a message that, uh, th where the change is long overdue. I mean, this has affected people for decades upon decades, and it took us to stand up to make a difference. And I'm just glad that we kind of start push the rock over the mountain because it, it needed to be pushed a long time ago. And to those people who say that youth are too young to make a difference, what do you say to them? You're wrong. Uh, so many of the greatest differences in this country have been made by the youth. Many people who try to oppress the voices of the youth, who try to get them to sit down, don't want the change to come about. If you are the youth of America and you're being told that, look to history. Mm -hmm. All the greatest things in this country have been started by the youth who are angry but also controlled and on the right path because at the end of the day, the youth is looking towards the future. Mm -hmm. We are creating a foundation for a better world. And the important thing is for people not to be deterred by change that come that comes slowly because change in this country has always come over the course of many many years so you can't just stop because nothing's happening you have to keep the ball rolling because one day something will happen you'll grow weary you'll feel like there's nothing that's going to come about your change and that's because it's a marathon not a sprint so keep on fighting even when it seems like it's all over it's not and the, it's those it's those rough patches and getting through them that really defines the change that you're going to make. Mm -hmm. And the important thing is to remember when you feel let down, to remember why you started in the first place, because I know that's something that always motivates me when I remember why we started March for Our Lives. It's because of what happened in our school and the 17 lives that 
can't speak anymore. You know, seeing all those pictures of our friends that we once saw in the halls, that's what keeps us going. And whatever they're fighting for, whatever the students are fighting for in their community, remember why and keep visiting back to that problem because it'll it'll just motivate you from the, like, like how you were motivated from the start. You are both inspirations. And on behalf of the WE organization and the schools that we serve, we're honored to be able to share this message with teachers, with families, and most importantly, with fellow students. Mm. So thank you for the extraordinary work that you do. Thank you. Thank you for having us.